when you talk about witches and things like the witch trials of the 1600s, first thing that automatically comes to your mind is, of course, Salem, Massachusetts. One of the places that you probably, probably would never think of out of all the places is Virginia Beach, Virginia. But that is where I am now because it's where I live and uh, it's where one of our most famous witches is from. And right now I am on this road that is called Witch Duck Road. And today we are gonna be talking about Grace Sherwood, the Witch of Pungo. I'm here at the corner of North Witch Duck Road and Independence Boulevard where they have a statue dedicated to the memory of Grace Sherwood. And she was known as a healer and she was also a very opinionated woman. Rumor has it she also would like to wear trousers and of course she had red hair so of course witch. She also had an affinity for wildlife. She explains the raccoon. And her knowledge of the local herbs and things that she used for healing. Someone has added flowers, obviously they are not part of the statue. Grace was born in the year 1660. She died in 1740. In 1780, at about 20 years old, she married James Sherwood, and together they had three sons, James, John, and Richard. It's a good name. Now, Grace Sherwood is known as the Witch of Pongo because obviously back in that time, there was no Virginia Beach. Uh, the area was known as Princess Anne County, and Grace and her husband lived in the Pungo area. And Pungo still exists. It's a, kind of a subdivision area of Virginia Beach. And uh, so, uh, and from what I can find, the foundation for a house still exists, but uh, I can't exactly track down where it is, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's probably on private property anyway, so I'm not gonna, you know, bother all of that. Plus Pungo is, quite a haul for where I'm at right now. Uh, th this area is a, it's a very, very large area. So there's this plaque here at the base of the statue that commemorates the 300th anniversary of Grace's trial in which she was actually ducked uh, and convicted as a witch. And this was a pardon that our governor at the time, Tim Kaine, gave her and uh, I'm not gonna read all this. You can pause the video and read it for yourself. But we're gonna talk about the ducking here in just a minute. I'm trying to walk down a ways a bit from the boulevard where the statue is located because as you can imagine, it is a very busy road. Lots of cars and motorcycles driving by because it is a gorgeous day today. Today is November 6, 2022. And it is darn near 80 degrees here in Virginia Beach. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely gorgeous day. Just perfect day to shoot this video on. So, uh, that being said, uh, in 1697, uh, Grace Sherwood was accused of putting a spell on a neighbor's bull, which resulted in the death of the bull. And she countersued for defamation, but both parties kind of worked out a deal, and the case was dismissed. Sometime later, Grace was again accused of witchcraft, putting a spell on some hogs, as well as being accused of damaging uh, some cotton crops. And there she sued for defamation again, but this time lost her suit. Of course, the legacy of Grace Sherwood is alive and well here in Virginia Beach. Uh, there's even a road named after her, Sherwood Lane, which is on the corner of North Witch Duck in the neighborhood Witch Duck Point. We're actually really close to the area where the ducking happened. 
Uh, it is a residential neighborhood now, and uh, so I don't think I'll be able to get out there to the water itself, but uh, I'm gonna give it a shot. Yeah, I didn't think that was gonna happen. Uh, I drove to the end of the road here, it's a cul-de-sac, and it's, of course, all residential houses. So, of course, you know, just don't wanna walk up in the yard and start filming, because, hey, that's rude. Okay, well, I found another spot where I thought I could, I could get closer to the location of the actual ducking. Uh, it'd be maybe about a quarter mile uh, down from the original location. Uh, because on my map, it, it, it kind of looked like it was a park. And uh, it turned out it was a private road. And I wound up talking with one of the neighbors there. And he actually had never heard of Grace Sherwood. He had no idea that Witch Duck Bay was actually used for ducking witches. He just thought it was just the name. Uh, so I think that's why videos like this are kind of important because people who live in the area don't really know their own history. And I'm not gonna fault the neighbor for that, no, not, not by any means, because uh, this area is also kind of a transient area. I mean, we've got a lot of military here, so we've got a lot of people who have, have moved down here just because of all that, and they get work here. Um, not everyone down here is a native like me. Right now, I'm standing outside the old donation Episcopal Church which is the location of Grace Sherwood's original church. And out here in her herb garden, they have a marker in memory of Grace Sherwood. And I'll leave that up there for y'all to read. Now I am out here at which is pretty much the mouth of the uh, Lynn Haven River. Uh, over this way to my right is Shore Drive. If you were on a boat and you went underneath that bridge, you come right to the Atlantic Ocean. To my left, if you continue down this way and veer all kind of to the right, you would eventually get to uh, what they call Witch Duck Bay, which is where the ducking happened. Uh, I tried several times to uh, get to Witch Duck Bay itself and just no joy. No one was home. I mean, it's a gorgeous day today. It's November, it's 80 degrees. Can you blame anyone for not wanting to be inside? Okay, so what led up to the big trial, the ducking itself, was um, in early January 1706, a great Sherwood was accused of witchcraft by Elizabeth Hill, one of her neighbors in which they've had previous disputes for. Grace did not go before the court to answer the charges and about a month later she was ordered to on account of that Elizabeth Hill accused her again of witchcraft which caused her to have a miscarriage. And so in March of that same year a group of women had to do a search of Grace's home to make sure that there weren't any um, voodoo dolls or anything like that, anything that could be involved in witchcraft. One of the things that had to be done as they examined Grace was they had a group of older women. Um, these are older married women who had to examine Grace's body, searching for marks of, of witches. Uh, things like, like balls, for example considered a witch mark and they had, had, had to examine her and verify that she had these moles before again she could continue on with the trial to determine if she was a witch and the ladies did determine that Grace did have marks on her body that the women did not. Now on uh, early May 1706 the justices of Princess Anne County had determined that there really wasn't any particular act that they could try Grace Sherwood on, but there was enough suspicion that she was taken into custody by the sheriff of Princess Anne County. 
and by July 5th was ordered to undergo the ducking. But because of the weather, they had bad weather, they had to postpone it by several days. Now, unlike Salem, Massachusetts though, Virginia did not have any capital punishment laws for dealing with witchcraft. So, even if it was determined that Grace Sherwood was a witch, she just had to be put into custody. She wasn't allowed to be hung or burned at the stake or anything like that. They had to ensure her safety. Now from here you can see there's a full skyscraper there in downtown Virginia Beach. That's uh, the Pembroke area. And that's close to where uh, Witch Duck Road is. Because Witch Duck Road is a very long road as well. Uh, but yeah, that's considered kind of the downtown area, uh, the hot spots, all the, the, the best shopping and things like that. There was a mall there that just recently got shut down. They're going to tear it down and rebuild it into something else like apartments and all sorts of other things. Uh, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Now, what we're here to talk about is, of course, Grace Sherwood. And so, like I said, I wanted to get as close as I could to, the, to where the ducking happened, but that's not going to happen. So that would be over off of that direction there. And uh, so this, this is what they had to do. So before the ducking, Grace was taken to a church where she was asked to ask for forgiveness. And try saying that five times fast. <laughs> so Grace replied that I be not a witch, I be a healer. So she was ordered to go by the ducking trial. Uh, so the next day, she was examined by a group of women who, to make sure that she didn't have anything on her body in order to affect an escape, uh, covered in a burlap, burlap sack, and then rowed out in a boat with a magistrate and the sheriff, while in another boat were several of the county officials. And so they rowed out about 200 yards in, into, the, uh, into the bay. Then what they proceeded to do was they bound Grace's left thumb to her right toe and her right thumb to her left toe in a crisscross fashion and then chucked her into the river. Now, as most of y'all know, if you sank and you drowned, you were innocent. If you floated, you were guilty. But not having a capital law, a capital punishment law in the books, they would have to rescue her if she sank. However, Grace floated. So before they determined that she was a witch, the magistrate tied a 13 pound Bible around her neck and he checked her in again. At this point, she started sinking, but Grace was able to get out of her bonds and come back up to the surface. So therefore she was a witch. And because she was found guilty of being a witch, she had to spend several years in jail. Now, Grace was released from prison sometime around 1714. And uh, after help, helping uh, to pay back her uh, back taxes on her property and everything with the help of the Lieutenant Governor, Andrew Spotswood. And after that, she lived a pr pretty much quiet life until her death in 1740. One of the legends goes that her sons placed her body in front of the fireplace of, of her home, at which point her body disappeared and went up the chimney. And all what was left was in, in the soot was a cloven hoof print. And of course, there are some other uh, more famous tall tales about Grace Sherwood, which we're going to get to in just a minute. Now, my fascination with the legend of Grace Sherwood, the Witch of Pungo, started with this picture, which is here in my home. When I was about, I think, 16 or 17 years old, I was with my mom. She had to get some pictures uh, framed, uh, some, some posters, and we went to this place called the Great Dismal Swamp Art Gallery which was down the street from, from my house, maybe about a mile down the road. Uh, it's where we got all of our pictures and stuff framed. 
And so while my mom was talking with the owner, talking about how she wanted her pictures framed, I was walking around and just looking at all the other pictures and things that they had framed on the wall. And one of the things they had up there was that picture of Grace. And I was admiring it for a while and then I would leave and look at some other things, but I kept coming back to that. And the proprietor noticed that I kept coming back to it. And hi, Martin. No one wants to see your butt. Yeah, turn around, let's see your face. Much better. Um, so the, as I said, the, the owner had noticed that I had noticed and had pointed it out to my mom. So some several months later at Christmas time, I received a gift and I opened it up and it was that picture. And I've had that with me ever since I've had for well over 30 years now. And in the past 22 years, since I've moved out, uh, I've lived in many different places and Grace is always one of the last things to go when I move out. She sits in the driver in the driver's side. <laughs> yeah, she drives. I told you which. Uh, I always have her in the passenger side seat next to me, and she's always one of the first things that goes into my new abode. Uh, even here at my condo, she was the very first thing I brought in here after my furniture. Now over here, are my big library of books. I have right here this. It says The Witch of Pungo by Louise Venable Kyle. And this contains uh, a, a list of, uh, you know, some stories and some of the legends about Grace Sherwood, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. Now, this book was actually the first book I'd ever gotten about uh, Grace Sherwood. Uh, in fact, I'd had that drawing for several years before I found out that Grace Sherwood actually was a real person because that kind of history just isn't taught. Uh, and th this doesn't just contain the story of Grace Sherwood. It's, uh, seven different stories about historical figures here in the Hampton Roads area. Uh, but it, this one has accounts of some of the legends of how uh, one, like one night, Grace Sherwood came through the keyhole into the bedroom of this one woman and changed herself into a big black cat and ridden on her. So another man said that she often made herself small and sailed to England in an eggshell and brought back magic seeds and herbs to grow in her garden. In fact, there's a legend that all the rosemary that grows in Virginia Beach was brought back by Grace Sherwood from England on her eggshell. Uh... Other people said, you know, she would dance around the cows and the cows would give sour milk and, you know, just all, all that type of stuff. Uh, so it's, it's really a, it's a neat read. I've had this book since, again, I was, uh, I don't want to say a kid because it's probably like 18, 19 years old. I don't know. Though the book is old, I, I remember buying it uh, at a bookstore. I, I think I might have gotten it at Walden Books back, back when they were still around. Um, but yeah, it's still, it's an old book. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's just a lot of things that Grace Sherwood was reported to be, uh, in the legends amongst the witchcraft. In fact, there's even a movie. There's a, um, very low, low budget horror film called, uh, Grace Sherwood, The Witch of Pungo. Um, whose name escapes me at the moment. It's one of those movies I've been meaning to watch, but just haven't gotten around to watching it. Uh, maybe I'll try to post a link uh, in the description below uh, for the film. Uh, uh, but, you know, it's one of those things, hey, kind of cool. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's about all I got for y'all today. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to eat. I've been running around for hours doing this. So I'm a bit hungry now. So I will call it a day. And uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, please, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe, I, I don't normally ask for your subscriptions, but if you like what you see, please subscribe. If you hadn't liked what you see, I thank you for watching this long. And um, so, yeah, and just as a reminder, as always, 
You can't take it with you, so give the gift of life and make sure you, that you are an organ donor. Like me. Because someone out there is going to need a brain. Uh, and uh, until next time, have fun. I'll see you down the road.